Hi, we're here at ASHG 2015 and we're hearing more about the Saudi Human Genome Project and which is better to use, targeted gene panels or whole exome sequencing? Dr. Dasuki, thank you so much for your talk. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Saudi Human Genome Project. Thank you very much. Uh, the Saudi Human Genome Project is a national uh, scientific project that's, will fu that's funded by the government of Saudi Arabia through CACS, which stands for the uh, King Abdelaziz City for Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. It has multiple sites, um, the main one being at King Faisal, but several additional sites, satellites, uh, exist throughout the kingdom, mostly at major academic centers. It aims at studying and uh, researching uh, the spectrum of genetic disorders among Saudis, which should help the Saudi population and probably the people of the region because they do share uh, some genetic background and this more or less the same types of conditions exist, obviously to varying frequencies among the different populations in the region. It sounds like a very important project for the Saudi population uh, along with the, the rest of the world and learning more about uh, the genetics. It is, it is. And just recently we started basically putting out some of the outcomes of some of the initial studies that had been conducted through this project. And the results seem to be quite uh, interesting and encouraging for us and for, other pe for the scientific community at large. Great. Uh, so in your talk, you spoke uh, a lot about using uh, Mendelian uh, disease research panels, so smaller panels as opposed to uh, using uh, whole exome panels. Tell us a little bit about that approach. The uh, research panels that we decided to use, we wanted them to be as comprehensive as possible, and that's what we tried uh, our best with, knowing that by the time you finish designing those panels, that panel that contains the list of genes of interest will not be complete compared to an exome, but gene panel-based testing uh, offers several advantages over exome-based uh, testing. While exome-based testing is more comprehensive, it is still expensive. It does still require significant expertise, both technical and uh, um, interpretive skills that not many people do have. And those are two major limiting factors in deciding uh, and determining the yield of exome sequencing results compared to panels. In our hands, the panels that we had designed and tested and validated, basically in many instances they would yield results literally uh, within minutes of mm -hmm. looking through the annotated filtered file compared to hours for the exome analysis. That, that sounds like a compelling reason to use these smaller gene panels as opposed we to exome so. sequencing. We believe so. We agree with that. And obviously with exome, the, the number of variants that one will run into, uh, whether you know their interpretation or they are of unknown clinical significance, uh, uh, that is another major issue that confronts people who deal with exomes on a daily basis. Uh, you, you chose to use the Amplicy technology for designing the, the, these smaller gene panels. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the selection of the Amplicy technology here? The Amplicy technology was chosen because of its robustness and its suitability for the panel approach that we uh, uh, decided on. And the combination uh, of, of our need for that uh, process for that approach and the availability of a uh, flexible uh, technology like uh, iron torrent amplisic based technologies uh, basically uh, prompted us into choosing uh, this technology over others. And what kind of variants are you able to get out of uh, using this kind of technology? We're able obviously to identify variants that had already been reported uh, in addition to novel variants that we predict them to be pathogenic, obviously the, one, you know, the novel variants still need validation through other methods, uh, which is another exercise for the scientific community to go through. Uh, in addition, we are able to identify variants that were thought to be pathogenic based on public databases mm -hmm. that we think are not pathogenic because of the high frequency in which we found those variants in our population. So probably it was ascertainment bias or something like that that resulted in the selection and, and, and reporting of those variants as being pathogenic. 
looks like in your, your paper you were able to detect uh, single nucleotide variants. What other kind of variants were you able to detect? Right. We are able, obviously, to detect the most common variants, which are SNVs or single nucleotide variants, as well as indels, but to a lower sensitivity. In addition, um, while in the paper that we published in Genome Biology in June of this year, we did not allude to the analysis of copy number variants. In an upcoming paper uh, that focuses on primary immune deficiency gene panel, mm -hmm. uh, we are addressing this question um, through the identification of large genomic variants that involve a couple of genes where we had 12 cases that were known to have um, large deletions, homozygous deletions, uh, in those samples, and we were able to confirm the deletions as well uh, in the panel-based analysis. So it is possible to identify uh, homozygous deletions. Potentially, it's also possible to identify heterozygous deletions, mm. but we have not done that type of extensive analysis yet. We need to do that. Okay. And were you able to confirm that that data uh, with the, the structural variation data with uh, uh, orthogonal technologies? Yes, yes. We use typically, especially for the specifically for those cases that we're talking about, microarray analysis as well as exon specific PCR amplification were used to confirm those results. Great. Thank you, Dr. Dosuki. My pleasure. Thank you very much.